Our scripture today is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Hear the word of God. He also says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. We thank you, Lord. This your holy word. Amen. Please be seated. One of the things that Jesus taught us is that there are two kingdoms around us. There's the kingdom of this world that we're living in, and there's the kingdom of God, which his people are living in. All around us, we see the kingdom of this world in politics. And there's the social kingdom. There's the moral kingdom. But we are invited into the kingdom of God. And here's what the Bible says. The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. The grain is ripe, but once he goes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. Think of this. Jesus tells us to plant his kingdom so that it can grow. We're to plant the seed. We're to water the seed. Many of you are in the process of growing gardens. And you know how that is. You have to plant the seed. You have to water the seed. And then you watch. And you watch God bring forth uh, how that the, the plant grow and flower. Well, it's the same in Bible school. This week we're called to plant the seed of God in our community's children that they may know Christ as their Savior. Vacation Bible school can be compared to gardens because here we plant and we water and we watch God's kingdom unfold. The purpose of Vacation Bible School is to help parents who want the very best for their children. Think of this. A child is like a growing plant that needs water. And parents provide the physical watering and the, the uh, emotional nourishment. They give their children um, safe homes to live in. They give them new showers to shower in. But children also need uh, uh, to be provided with the seed of God's kingdom. They need to be introduced to Jesus Christ. They need to know that he wants them to invite him into their heart. In other words, children need a Christian education. They need that invitation into the kingdom of God. They need to know that God made them. They need to know that God loves them. And they need to know that God wants them to do well with their lives. Children need to know God. They need to know that God provided his son to save us from our sins. And we have, for many years, more years probably than we can remember, there's a Sunday school that goes on in this church. And there's faithful children who have come out and got a Christian education here. And their children in church, they're, they're learning. They're watering God is watering his seed, which has been planted, uh, as we come to Sunday school and we come to worship. Our children, they have so much information that they're expected to know, but they need to know the gospel as well. 
Vacation Bible School is our evangelistic opportunity for Christian children to invite their, especially their unchurched friends, to know the Lord. This week, these children are going to be invited to know that, that God wants them to have a heavenly home. And Jesus said it's just like planting a seed. You plant a seed with hope that it will sprout and provide good fruits. Jesus said his kingdom is like planting a mustard seed, so tiny and so small. Yet when you plant it and it's watered, it becomes a tree that the birds can make their nests in. Well, Vacation Bible School is going to begin with a picnic, and if it's going to rain, we don't know if it's going to rain, maybe we'll pray the rain off until after that, that evening. But if it doesn't, we'll have it inside downstairs. But we're to invite our community's children and their parents to come to this picnic. And then we have the opportunity to talk to them and to plant seeds, leading, their, leading them and their children to Christ and encouraging them all to use the spiritual gifts. Because once you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to develop us in life. And we might never use these gifts if we're not challenged to show God's love to other people. So our goal this week, like a vacation Bible school, is not entertainment. But it's to plant the seed of God's love and invite children into the kingdom of God. And every one of us has a part in sharing faith. We need to plant. And we also know our children have a part in planting. We have Christian children here. And <coughs> from an early age, our children have a, a responsibility to, to lead others into the kingdom. And our offering this week is going to, to go to save try to save these unborn children with, with mothers who are having a, a troubled pregnancy or thinking about abortion. And we want to save these children and we want to bring them into the, the kingdom of God. So we're supporting the Alpha Omega Center in Slippery Rock in Newcastle. But can you imagine what a difference we can make in our community this week and in the world? The children who come are going to learn about the Bible. Tonight they're going to, to learn 2 Corinthians 9.8. And that tells us about how God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others and we can do good, good work. God gives us the seed to plant and to be a blessing to other people. And um, throughout the week we're going to talk about the prophet Elijah. And Elijah was a man that God called to, to stand against the evil uh, kingdom. The uh, kingdom of the world that Elijah was in was Israel under King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And they were out, and it sort of reminds me of this time that we're in. They were trying to eradicate God from, the true God from their society and get Israel to bow down to, to Baal. And Elijah climbed the mountain, Mount Carmel, and stood against the prophets of, of Baal. So God called Elijah to stand up against the evil of his time and to call Israel to return to the Lord. And Elijah, as I said, planted that seed. The same seed that Joshua planted. If you remember Joshua, he said to the people, Choose this day whom you will serve. If it's God, serve God. If it's Baal, serve Baal. Elijah said, If the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal is your God, go serve him. Well, Monday, the seed is going to be about how God comforts us. And you know, it was Elijah. Prophets didn't have an easy job. And just like anyone, they can get down. And Elijah was really depressed after, after he uh, defeated the, the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And God comforted Elijah. You know, the, the gardening can, can become depressing at times. You plant that seed and it comes up and you go out in the morning and there's all the weeds. You say, oh my goodness, do I have to weed again and again and again? Yes, yes you do. And it can get you down and you say, I don't even want to garden anymore. But God promises to comfort and strengthen us. And he did that with Elijah. And here's what the verse that the kids will learn. God comforts us in our troubles so we can comfort others. And two says the seed will be from 2 Kings. And we're going to hear about how Elijah dealt with 
proud Naaman. Naaman had a disease called leprosy. And uh, his, he had a, a slave girl, a, a Jewish slave girl, who, who led him to go to Elijah, the prophet. And Elijah didn't even see him. He says, go take seven baths in the Jordan River. And he had to humble himself and go into the Jordan River and be healed. And the Bible verse says, God heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. We have to humble ourselves to enter the kingdom of God. And on Wednesday, the seed is how God heals us of our sins. When Jesus died on the cross and was raised back to life. And on Thursday, the last day, when we're going to have the ice cream coaches, the seed is Jesus promised that when the harvest is come, his people will have a home in heaven. And the verse is John 3.15. Everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Don't you think these are good seeds to be planting in our children this week? We're going to give them an invitation to come into God's kingdom. Jesus said, plant the seed and watch it grow. We do that with our gardens. I, I was so pleased. Uh, we're not that good at gardening, but my sister-in-law gave us some cannon balls. And we, this is, what, the third year? And we plant these. We have to dig them up every year and store them in the garage. And that's probably not the best place for them because they're not supposed to freeze. But we take them out and we plant them and we watch these huge plants grow. And it's, it's so, so uh, satisfying to watch the beautiful flowers. And then come the hummingbirds. And to, uh, to watch the hummingbirds. But you know you have to water those things. And you have to weed. And you have to protect them from vermin. And finally you have to, to uh, at the end, that was, uh, some, that was kind of heartbreaking in the fall. You have to cut down the stalks and dig those things up and then put them back in the, back in the garage until uh, next year, the harvest. But then you gather them up with the hope that next year you're going to have another great harvest. God wants us to plant his garden in the midst of his kingdom. But there's another kingdom that's around us. And we need to, to let people know that you don't have to stay in the kingdom of this world. We won't. This is just temporary. But God offers us an eternal kingdom. And we need to plant the seed of the gospel and water it by talking to people about Christ then watching God work before our very eyes. Jesus spoke of two kingdoms. And in that day, that kingdom of this world was the Roman Empire. It was a vast, overwhelming military kingdom with economic and political control over the known world. Israel was under the thumb of Rome. And Rome overtaxed the people punished anyone who got in Caesar's way and paraded their false gods right in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, take my seed right into the very heart of that kingdom and plant the kingdom of God. And that's what we do. We plant the gospel. You know, it, uh, there was a law when I was over in Sweden. There, they had a law for hundreds of years. No building. And it, I, I think that law was in America for a long time. No building in the community was to be higher than the church, the tallest church tower. And you look at a, a church tower, that church tower is like a finger pointing people to God. So whenever you see a church tower, that's what the, the original symbolism was, pointing a finger to God's, God's kingdom. And by doing that, we water, we provide, we comfort, we heal, and we lead people to get ready for that great harvest. And along the way, we're going to have to deal with, with the weeds. If you're gardening, you know those weeds can grow faster than, the, than the, good, the good stuff. And in our world today, Satan is actively planting his weeds and trying to lead people away from the kingdom of God. For example, here's, here's some things that you hear every day that you don't realize the full implications of. They're trying to teach our children to be religiously neutral. And what does religiously neutral mean? It means you're to act like an atheist in the public sector. You're, good, you're to deny, you're going to hide that there's a God. That's what religiously neutral means. And then they were to teach.
teach everybody, be inclusive, be inclusive. Well, that means let the weeds grow up among the wheat. Uh, so when the harvest comes, what, are the, what uh, is going to happen? Jesus said, the, hit, the wheat gathers into the barn and the tares are gathered and burned. How many people realize that they need to be let out of the kingdom of weeds into the kingdom of wheat? You ask someone to church, you ask the child to come to Sunday school. They say, I can't come. I have a game. I have a hobby. Anyway, worship is boring. What they're saying is the kingdom of this world has a lot more appeal to me than the kingdom of God. Means I have so much time invested in the kingdom of this world that I don't have enough time to give to the kingdom of God. There's so many activities and things that people think are more important in a child's life than the kingdom of God. But remember, Jesus said you can't serve both God and mammon. And when the harvest comes, many people are going to be surprised because the kingdom of this world passes away. We see it every day. It's passing away. Only the kingdom of God is going to last forever. And at the last judgment, God's seed will be gathered into the barn and the chaff will be thrown away. Lastly, note that it's God who's going to do the harvesting. We're only called to do the planting. We take God's seed, we plant it, and we watch. And God's going to gather the harvest. So this week we're going to be planting God's seed. God's provided us the seed. It's called his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit to water these children into the kingdom of God. So here again the seed that we're to plant this week. One, God provides for us. Two, God comforts us. Three, God heals us. Four, God saves us. And five, God will harvest our sin. Jesus said this kingdom, kingdoms come and kingdoms go, but only one kingdom will last. And that's the kingdom that we'll be planning this week in Bible school. Let us pray. Dear Lord our God, we give you thanks that you have provided us with your kingdom. It's not a temporary kingdom like the one that we're living in now, but it's an eternal kingdom. It's a good kingdom. It's a kingdom, Lord, that we want our children to enter. And we just pray, Lord, that, that there would be many parents that would love their children enough to, to bring them to Bible school, to have that seed planted in their